Do this in memory of me. The Eucharist lies at the heart of our Catholic faith. Do this in memory of me. For 2,000 years, we've been doing as Jesus asked. Gathering together, listening to the scriptures, taking, blessing, breaking, giving. And then being sent as missionaries to wash feet. We heard a lot of good news during our synod listening sessions. For many, Mass is still a special central part of their lives. It's there that they meet Christ most intimately, in the Blessed Sacrament, as the readings are proclaimed, and in the community. We heard stories of full and grateful hearts, but we also heard of broken hearts. Those for whom gathering on Sunday is no longer as important as it once was, or who no longer feel welcome doing so. Those who feel disconnected from what we do at Mass, that it no longer holds meaning for them. Those who see the celebration of the Eucharist as hypocritical, the sacrament of unity in a church split by rancor and division. The sacrament of healing in a church that has wounded its most vulnerable. Our diocese isn't alone. We're all struggling with pews that seem emptier than before the pandemic. We can feel tired and worn out, discouraged, unsure of what to do. There's no easy path forward. The synod and the ongoing conversations that have come from that are part of the way. The U.S. bishops have offered us another opportunity, what they are calling a National Eucharistic Revival. Reading the signs of the times, they have seen that the church in our country is in need of renewal. We need to have a fire sparked again, a fire that can only come from a living relationship with Jesus Christ. Christ, whom we meet whenever we gather for Eucharist. It is in this meeting, this encounter, that we can be changed, healed, converted, formed, unified, if we are open. This isn't a program. It's not a to-do list that we get to check off. As a diocese, as parishes, as families, as individual Catholics, we're being asked to be intentional about making Jesus Christ the center of our lives. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of the world. Okay, Christ at the center. That makes sense. But what's all this about the Eucharist? Our Catholic faith holds that the Eucharist is the gift that Christ makes of himself, showing us God's love for every person, where Christ comes to meet us and journey with us, even as he did with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. I love that word, encounter. Its root meaning has to do with coming face to face with someone, like turning the corner and being surprised by the one you find in front of you. In the Eucharist, we encounter Christ. If we are open, especially to being surprised, we might find that such a meeting changes us over time. I remember the story of an old monk who was celebrating his 50th or maybe 70th anniversary in the monastery. He was asked what it was like to pray the Psalms day in and day out, year after year. And didn't it get boring? He smiled and said, no, no, not boring. But that over time, the Psalms had soaked into his bones soaked into his bones. 
They made him who he was. That's the Eucharist too, over time, if we're open. If we receive the gift, it soaks into our bones, as it were. It makes us more and more who we became at baptism, part of Christ's body. How do we know we've received the gift? By the life we live. A Eucharistic life is one lived for others, like Jesus. That's how we make a return gift back to God for the gifts God has given us. Like the Synod, this isn't a one-and-done sort of thing. We're talking about a way of being church, not just what we do as church. But as we grow this way, we do have some benchmarks. This year is the diocesan year. The main focus is to start putting things together for parishes next year to help focus and energize and equip our clergy and lay leaders. Next year, we'll focus on parish life, on ways that we can help those who come to our doors meet Christ more intimately, to truly fall in love with the one who is truly present in the Eucharist. The parish year will culminate in a National Eucharistic Congress, a gathering of over 80,000 Catholics around our Eucharistic Lord. But not as an end in itself, in order to be missioned. That's the focus of the next year, being sent as missionary disciples to share the gift of Christ, especially as we've met him at Eucharist with others. It's providential that the Holy Father has also declared 2025 to be a jubilee year, calling all of us to be pilgrims of hope to the world. <laughs> That's a tall order, and it can be really overwhelming to think about, but also exciting. So where do we start? How do we start? What does it mean to believe in, celebrate, and live the Eucharist in Southeast Iowa in 2022 and beyond? Where do we need to be converted and formed? What divisions need to be overcome? For all that to happen, we need to foster encounters with Christ Jesus, in the Eucharist to be sure, and beyond. Foster. We can't make it happen. What we can do is help create conditions where it's easier for folks to see that Christ is here waiting for them with open arms. How do we help folks meet Christ in the truth of our faith, in the beauty of our liturgies, in the goodness of those who live Eucharistic lives? This is about a way of being, not just a list of things to do. A way of being across the various cultures that enrich our local church, as individuals and families, as schools and parishes, and as a diocese. Do this in memory of me, Jesus told his disciples. Come, he tells us. Come, gather together. I desire to be with you. Come, listen to my words. Let your hearts burn. Come, take Bless, break, give, and then go. Go, love your neighbor. Go, tell others about me. Go, be salt and leaven and light. Go, and wash feet. Do this. Do all this in memory of me.